I've been producing music in Ableton Live for about 10 years, and these are five hacks that I've learned over the years that I simply could not produce without. Totally game-changing and super helpful for your workflow. Before we hop into the video, quick announcement for you guys. I recently dropped a super fire, complete start to finish music production course. It's designed to give you every single tool you're ever gonna need to produce professional quality music in 30 days, either if you're totally brand new or if you've been producing for a while but you're just struggling to get your sound to the next level. It's over 17 hours of content distributed over 30 days of learning. We also have a super fire community where you can hop in and ask questions, free monthly sample packs, all kinds of cool stuff. Also, we've recently worked out a deal where if you sign up for the course, we can actually give you guys educational discounts on Ableton Live, FabFilter, Isotope, Sound Toys, Kilohertz, Arturia, and Output. So you can literally save thousands of dollars. And as of right now, the course is on sale, so it costs less than dinner. So definitely worth it, definitely worth checking out. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Let's get into the video. All right, so my number one workflow feature in Ableton is gonna be a Max for Live device called Shortcut Buddy. Now, if you are not new to the channel, you've probably heard me talk about this a thousand times, and that's because it's that good. So there's a number of different shortcut plugins for Ableton that are either external, so they run outside of Ableton, or they're internal. I've been through all of them. This one is the best, takes up no CPU, and it works tremendously. So basically the way I have it set up is, so I save it on my default track, just on a return track, so it's just out of the way. You can save it anywhere. And what it does is it allows you to map any plugin to any quick key. So let's say I'm over here and I want a pro cue. I have my map to P, so all I have to do is press P, and it's gonna give me a pro cue every time. You can do this with Ableton plugins, you can do it with third-party plugins, you can do it with synthesizers. So I have my Serum rack mapped to 4, so when I press 4, not only does it open up a new MIDI track, it has Serum on it, and it's got my Serum rack on it. So this plugin is goaded, it's absolutely my favorite. Um, I'll link it down in the description, I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks. And again, you can map anything to it. So whatever you use the most that you're coming up here and searching for, map it to a quick key. Number two is going to be looking at multiple MIDI clips on one piano roll. The way we're gonna do this is we're going to click on a MIDI clip, and then we're gonna hold Command on Mac and select the other MIDI clips we wanna see. This is gonna allow us to look at and edit all this MIDI in one section, in one piano roll. This is super beneficial because if you wanna make sure everything's in key and everything's grooving well with each other, we can actually just look at them all here, and if we need to make adjustments, we can move stuff, and it's gonna to apply to whatever MIDI track we came from. Love this trick, I didn't know about it for a long time. Definitely worth checking out. My next favorite hack, and this is gonna be particular to Ableton Live 12, and that's the search history arrows up here. So sometimes you're in a drum pack and you go and look for something else. What drum pack did that come from? I need to stare now. If we come up here to these arrows, we can select back, and it's gonna take us back in our search history so we can figure out where we came from. This next one also is particular to 12, but I don't see a lot of people talking about it, and that's the undo history feature. So what we're gonna do is on Mac, we're gonna press Option Command Z, and it's gonna open up this list over here. And this is a list of all the steps we've taken. So every move, every adjustment we've done. And we can actually come back and select one of these. And what it's going to do, it's going to take us back to that point in the project. So let's say like all this stuff happened, but we want to come back to uh, when we launched the utility. Double click this, and it's going to take us back to that spot in the project. Number five, and probably my favorite one, is going to be the similar sample feature. Sometimes you're looking for a sample. Let's say we want like a big brass hit or something like that. That's cool, but let's try something a little bit different. If we click this button here, now it's gonna show us all samples that are sonically similar to this one. The reason why I love this feature is because yes, while we could just search for brass, not all brass samples have the name brass in it. And I think that's why, for me at least, I end up using probably 30% of my sample library because a lot of these don't have that name in them. So now we can come through and we can search these regardless of the name. And sometimes they're a little off, but generally speaking, they're pretty good and I've gotten some pretty good results from doing this. That's my top five workflow hacks for you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.